Last week, I went to Canada for NeurIPS 2024. In this video, I want to tell you what the industry is up to, what the research is up to, and how you can participate in this flagship conference. But first, let's take a step back to understand what NeurIPS is. NeurIPS as a conference was started the same year I was born. Back then, it was less than 500 people from computational neuroscience. And guess what? One of the invited speakers at this NeurIPS was at that very first one. People keep coming back to this conference year after year because there is nothing like NeurIPS to know what's going on in the world of machine learning. As the conference grew, it broadened over time. And as is always the case when you invite more people, there's more controversy. In 2018, the controversy got so bad that the conference needed to be renamed from NIPS to NeurIPS. Generally, I'm really happy with the changes that NeurIPS has made since. But even this conference was not without its controversy. One of the invited speakers had to make an apology for insinuating that Chinese students are more likely to cheat. However, controversy or not, NeurIPS is still the flagship event in machine learning. And it's all enabled by sponsors. Sponsors are everywhere throughout this event. They're throwing parties and inviting wonderful guests. I had a privilege to be invited to a couple of parties put on by Turing. Uh, where we got to listen to the greatest minds in ML, including Jeff Dean of Google Brain. But the largest concentration of sponsors is undoubtedly in the Expo Hall. This is where big companies come to recruit, small companies come to show off their technology, and every company in between comes to talk to the brightest minds in machine learning today. Oh, and there's lots of swag. By the way, if you're ever at a conference like this and want to get some swag, Make sure to stop by a booth that's handing out bags first. There were lots of robots running around. And I actually got a chance to talk to one of the companies producing a robot that you can try out your own algorithms on. I'm from Booster Robotics. Uh, we are a company based from China. And this is our product, Booster T1. It's a special design for the developers. It's a a platform for the users to test their algorithm in this platform. And we have SDKs for the uh, developers to test their reinforced learning or imitation learning or language models can deploy on these robots. And, uh, Excellent. And what is the hardware? Is there like an NVIDIA Jetson inside of it? Yes, we have the NVIDIA AJAX Orin uh, deployed Orin. on these robots. And we also have a, a X86 uh, the CPU board on this on this robot. And we have a RGBD camera in the hand, and you can do the uh, vision related work. And also, uh, this 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 robot can stably work in the ominous direction in the any floor floor. Yes. Also, it's very durable. So this robot can fall on the board and get up auto autonomously by itself. And also, uh, we have uh, a simulation environment for this robot. You can. Uh, train your models in the ISAC team and uh, we both for Modoko and uh, we also will release our reinforcement learning framework wow. so you can train your models by yourself. Aside from robots, there are lots of ecosystem defining companies. Lots of folks trying to sell you GPU hours, but also some indispensable companies like Anaconda. So we're Anaconda. Uh, we're behind the Conda ecosystem. Um, we essentially made the uh, Python data science uh, world complexity uh, into a product. And we realized that a lot of the folks who are here as machine learning engineers and a lot of the folks building AI applications um, depend on us and rely on us. So um, we're here because we want to understand and listen exactly how they're working with our systems. We also want to highlight some of the new things that we're building with AI. We think the emergence of AI gives us the opportunity to drive a lot more value into their hands. Um, we're highlighting a few key AI-related initiatives that we're working on to do just that. Um, the ability to uh, have in-context assistance inside of Jupyter Notebooks is one of them. The ability for people to have local models, um, work with local models, which is a product we have called AI Navigator. Um, and just a few other areas that we're kind of driving value there. And uh, yeah, so we just want to listen to folks, understand what they are uh, working with, and make sure that we can continue to provide support to them. I'm really excited to see what Anaconda has in store. It's a company that has over and over again made my life and life of so many of us much simpler. 
and it's terrific to see them continue to innovate. Smaller companies also show up to NeurIPS to show off what they're doing with their LLMs. And yes, I would like to say what they're doing with machine learning technology, but let's face it, today, LLMs are dominant. I'm engineer at Exxon, and our thesis is that a lot of search has been stuck in the past. Slowly, the traditional search systems have been uh, incorporating like embeddings at the last layer. Like There's a lot of research focused on using embeddings to re-rank, like uh, do traditional search pipelines, and then look at the last like few, and um, and incorporate a new technology that way. But kind of our thesis is that if you were to build a search engine from scratch, you would want to incorporate the technology from the very beginning. And there hasn't been that much research done on scaling these methods to like billions or higher scale. And right now, like a lot of that research is done on the rebaking step, which makes sense if you want to incorporate into like old uh, pipelines. But for uh, us, we think that like we want to uh, like perfect search, and to do that, uh, we have to use the technology from the very beginning. So we're training like large scale embedding models to do. Like much higher quality embedding because yeah. work at like larger scales. And also like another thesis of ours is that like compute is kind of, like there's an interesting argument for compute scaling where like if you see like the new like a lot like using uh, different type of view, that's like that has like had a lot of uh, good, like interesting impacts because yeah. um, well because you can you can move the tra uh, scaling from uh, training time to inference time. So we kind of like have this one idea for search as well where like some queries are very complex have like many different parameters. For example, if you're a VC that wants to find like, oh, what's a company that has between 20 and 40 employees that's based in SF that's working at biomedical AI? Um, you might imagine that like this is very hard to find with general yeah. research, and you might have a human like do many many like general searches to do this process. But for us, we want to have like the best search at all like compute frontiers. Where like you might imagine like for a complex like that, you could use a lot of even like that a self-reflective like agent mm -hmm. does a search and like checks each result like matches and like does like initial searches to find that like. Oh yeah, we do match all these queries, uh, all these uh, patterns of the query. Um, so like instead of a human doing like a lot of like low low quality searches, which are still like valuable for like yeah. certain use cases, um, you can just like move a lot of the compute frontier and do like one very high quality search that could potentially like take it takes a system minutes, but it might take a human like days or like even like longer to do that that type of research. And finally, big companies are primarily at NeurIPS to hire. And while I could not get any representative of a big company on video, I did have some chats off camera. The companies are hiring pretty aggressively in machine learning. I even got some tips from a big company recruiter who chose to remain uh, anonymous. This person has recommended that you keep your LinkedIn profile up to date and try to apply with a referral whenever possible. But the other thing this person talked about is a story of somebody who was not very likely to get an interview, but who kept coming to in-person event and interacting with recruiters. You see, one of the hardest parts of getting through the hiring process is getting your resume in front of an actual person. And guess what? At these events, you get to speak to recruiters directly. I even talked to one big tech company that I could not get an interview with, no matter what I've tried over the years. And the recruiter said, you know what, you're right, our process is broken. Here's my email address. If you're ever looking again, please email me directly. Showing up in person makes a big difference. The other thing I heard from multiple recruiters at the event is if you can get published in NeurIPS, you actually have a huge leg up on everybody else. But don't run off starting your proposal just yet. First, let me share my conversation with somebody who's actually done it, who will tell you just what it takes to get into NeurIPS. Uh, my name is Ninkai and I have a poster in Europe. Um, this is uh, Asian Night to here in Vancouver and uh, at the sea. Um, so, so the process for uh, getting a European publication is, um, of course, um, I'm currently a grad, uh, a grad student. So uh, my, my brother and I discuss, find some uh, problem that has potential. Um, usually uh, we feel some of the maybe one half of them will e eventually come out. And then uh, we have directly background, and then we do numerical, numerical, numerical experiment. And after numerical experiment is uh, is done, and then we start writing the paper. We start from writing the paper from um, method, methodology, and then numerical experiment, and then and then introduction. After this, I, pro I propose my draft to the to my instructor, and then he fixed the uh, introduction mostly. And similar now, I, um, I think this, um, I think. Um, the deadline for Europe is um, maybe May, uh, and, and then I start working this project. It's, it's a follow-up from some projects, but I start writing the paper from maybe February. But uh, before that, I've been working on this for a year, so maybe a year of study, and then maybe um, two, three months of writing. 
and then in the end we submit to, to Europe um, at May and then um, after that it's holiday so uh, we do some reviews um, and, and then uh, after the review um, it comes the rebuttal period so rebuttal, rebuttal, rebuttal period means the reviewer gives you feedbacks and then um, and then you defend your claim that your paper is good so so you need to reply them just remember to be politely um, they are the boss <laughs> in this stage and then and then it's just like a forum so you can discuss your paper um, and then after the, uh, it's maybe uh, it is maybe um, a month after the submission deadline and then the, the, the discussion period maybe a week or two and after that um, people um, and, and after that everything is done um, the area chair we did, we, we'll discuss with discuss with the reviewer um, discuss about uh, about their score and, and then maybe a month, a month later and they will tell you the outcome whether you are admitted or not um, so, um, so so the key is you get higher scores so um, maybe 10 is the uh, uh, fully accept this is the best paper they've ever seen. One paper is strongly reject. People usually get three to eight, okay. and if you get average, maybe more than five, you are you are good. You are in good shape, and um, uh, so in the rebuttal period, you persuade the uh, reviewer to have um, your paper is good to let them increase the scores, and um, and and after your paper get uh, get accepted, you prefer you prefer a camera camera ready version, and then get get your plane ticket right here. So most people get a poster, so you need also make a poster to present to, for, to, present to people. How did you feel about it? I feel it's perfect. It's <laughs> definitely worth going. And um, it's, I imagine it's uh, just sizing without paying. So I like it. <laughs> that is extremely helpful advice. And I hope it shows you just how long it takes for the paper to get all the way through to a prestigious conference like NeurIPS. However, the most important part is to make sure you're working on something that's in demand now. So what is in demand? What are people learning from this conference? Remember when I took us back to the early days of NeurIPS at the beginning of this video? Well, NeurIPS is not that academic anymore. In fact, lots and lots of talks and posters have been about actual practical applications. This is a departure from years past, and it dovetails neatly with one of the invited talks, where the speaker talked about how we had an explosion in learning paradigms which have converged to transformer models and now from that convergence we need an explosion in applications but there are also problems with LLMs in fact one of the ways to make transformers smarter is to include reinforcement learning there's been tons and tons of material talks about how to integrate reinforcement learning with the current transformer architectures. There is a big sense that we're running out of data. Ilya Sutskover talked about that. That sense permeated the conference from the very beginning. Uh, hi, I am Jacob Hames. I work with Apart Research and the Odyssean Institute, and I founded Kairos FM, and I host two podcasts. And I am here mainly with Apart Research because our fellowship program had five different papers come to workshop here, um, and two of which I was, uh, was the project manager uh, for. Uh, and. We're having a great time. Um, the one thing that I've learned that I'm most uh, interested in and want to follow up more on is there's even more evidence that uh, just scaling is, is not it than I thought there was. Uh, and I think that's pretty cool. Meeting with people is another important reason to come to these conferences. I myself have seen lots of folks from Adobe, Twitter, and Meta that I have interacted with while I was at those companies. Yeah, uh, I'm Ifan from Coinbase. So I just graduated two years ago uh, from UCSD. Uh, so that's why I just want to renew, reunion with uh, academia to learn what's going on like recently. Days. And actually it's a good time to, for all these ML engineers to a researcher like from industry, academia, come together and learn and uh, talk, yeah. Excellent. And anything that stood out to you so far in the conference? I, I listened to Fifi's talk. Like yeah. All, it's kind of like a, also like a, all the material has been like revisited many many times. I think we still get some new perspective. Yeah, and also like how interactive, uh, uh, how interaction with the physical world is important, and uh, and that's actually people feel it's pretty far away in the past. Uh, now I think it's more and more realistic, yeah. uh, given the fast growth field and. The how many young talent people join the, join the community, yeah. Of NeurIPS, 17,000 attendees this year. 
Uh, the majority of us were there to learn, listen, and meet with people. My name is uh, Dimitri. I'm working uh, uh, as a research scientist at uh, Google DeepMind right now. So I'm attending New Rips. Um, I think one of the most interesting talks I've seen is the, uh, the keynote yesterday on um, how the children learn, how the babies learn, and how can we use actually this kind of knowledge to improve uh, our neural networks how, and our models in general. Uh, so I would think that the most interesting notion I haven't thought about before is the notion of empowerment. So how the agent is able to um, change the actions change the observation by doing the actions so maximizing the mutual information between the action actions and the observations golem and the stone soup that was the talk by one of those original new rips attendees dr gopnik and her talk was remarkable i will link to the abstract in the description below and i hope new rips publishes it soon so i can link to the full talk so as we see at NeurIPS, it's super important to be connected with your community and learn about new things in the world of machine learning. And if you want to stay up to date, one way to do so is to subscribe to my newsletter linked below.